Shalom Chavari, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, friends, Israeli News Live was invited on uh, February the 8th, 2018, up to Lake County, Florida there. Jim Volpe, as you can see on your screen and behind you here, invited uh, Israeli News Live to come and cover the political rally, the Trump political rally that was being held there. The keynote speaker, of course, was Roger Stone. And uh, But the thing that really was remarkable about this particular event is something that Pastor Paul Begley did in the introduction of uh, the, the meeting to begin with. He was actually asked to lead in prayer, also was asked to speak some words at the event. And of course, as a news organization, we're unbiased, and of course, we're not going to necessarily take a side, but we wanted to cover the event. But what shocked me is exactly what Pastor Paul Begley did during this particular campaign event here. Uh, and of course, it was a Trump rally. So the people that were there were supporters of uh, President Donald Trump. There were no protesters outside. It was pretty much way out in the country to begin with. So whether or not they were aware of the event or not, I have no idea, but we didn't see any protesters there. But when Pastor Paul Bagley actually got up and, and give the prayer for the event. He did something that most people in the, in the United States would consider, consider totally politically incorrect. He invoked the name of Jesus Christ in his prayer. But I have to tell you, friends, to me, that is the politically correct thing to do. Now, you were this was a meeting full of both Christians and Jewish people that were supporters of President Donald Trump. There was one Jewish man that gave a, 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 a speech as well about a monument that he had made that he was hoping that would go in the new U.S. embassy that would be moved to Jerusalem. Uh, and he was honoring the soldiers that had fought and died, the British, the, the French, and the Russian soldiers with this monument. But it was just fascinating to me to see that, that, that uh, Brother Bagley actually invoked the name of Jesus Christ, not only in his prayer, but even in his speech where he spoke for about 10 minutes there before Roger Stone came on. Again, he exalted the name of Jesus Christ. I have to tell you something. You know, I know that that's not considered politically correct, but I have to tell you something, friends. You know, they threw the Bibles out of the school. You take the name of Jesus Christ out of prayer in, in all the political meetings around the country to finally hear that name, the name above all names, once again mentioned at a political rally just really stirred my heart. Afterwards, I talked to uh, Brother Bagley and I said to him, do you realize what you did? I said, I have myself personally, maybe it's happened, but I have never seen a political event where the name Jesus Christ has been mentioned, at least not in my lifetime. And that just really blew me away. He said, well, you know, brother, he said they, they never said that I couldn't say it. And they didn't say, they didn't give me any instructions of what I was allowed to say or not to say. He said, you know me, I just, I like to talk about Jesus. And I was like, just really blown away by it. So, you know, I want you to be able to hear exactly what was said, what happened. I know there's some people that have different views. You know, Trump said, you know, there's a lot of people that listen to Israeli News Live maybe that do not like President Trump or don't like Roger Stone, whatever your personal views may be. We did this from a uh, as a news organization covering this event. And of course, to me, what Paul Begley did was clearly a milestone in politics today, bringing the name of Jesus Christ back into the circle the way it should be in our nation. You know, we are a nation, one nation under God, according to the Pledge of Allegiance. We are a nation to where uh, a Christian nation. So, of course, the name of Jesus Christ should be at the forefront. I'm Stephen Benoon. Listen to what's next. Okay, that's better. Now, okay. Again, welcome and uh, from Indiana. How many people have uh, have heard Pastor Paul Bailey? If you're here, you've heard. Okay, Paul, you've got a few friends here. Yeah. Okay, so all the way from Indiana, we have uh, Pastor Paul Bailey is going to open in prayer, and then we're going to have the uh, uh, the place of allegiance, and then Paul's going to address us again. So, would you uh, you want to rise or sit down? Yeah, okay, Pastor Paul. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, this privilege to be gathered here with these great Americans and to give honor, Lord, to you for blessing our country, for giving us a nation, Lord, that we have the freedom to worship, the freedom to live and to work, 
and to be a part of a community of folks, Lord, that truly appreciate the red, white, and blue. We thank you, Lord, for President Donald Trump and for his wife, Melania, and their family, Vice President Mike Pence and his wife, Karen, and their family. We thank you, God, for their leadership that President Trump has brought to America. God, you blessed him. You put your hand upon him. Without a question, he is the man for God for our, this very hour, and we thank you for that. So, Lord, we ask that you bless this gathering here today. Bless the president of this organization, David G., and bless all of those that have gathered here, all the staff, all the members, everyone that worked so hard together. And we thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life on the cross to set men from, free from sin, and will never fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name, the people said. Amen. Amen. It's literally under threat. And if it weren't for, I believe this, if it weren't for the power of the prayer of God's people, uh, came together, the Bible says, if my people are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. I would hear from heaven, forgive the sin and heal the land. Amen. And I believe the Lord heard our prayer. We did more than just pray, though. We went out and voted. Amen? Amen. But some folks will say, well, now that President Trump is in the White House, let's wait and see what he can do. Well, really, he's in the White House, but it's really up to what we can do. There's a time now that I've been saying this on my uh, television show and, and also on YouTube and all my uh, live shows. I've been saying, God wants to raise up a standard. There are people throughout America that need to run for political office, for the mayor of the town, for Congress positions, let state legislative positions, school, school board positions. We need uh, strong, conservative, God-fearing people to take their position in this great nation and be accounted for. If we do it from the ground, from the grassroots, if we do it from the, that, right on the floor, really, of the, and begin to lift up, this nation cannot be defeated. And I can tell you prophetically, some of the things that's been happening in the last year has been unbelievably, what the president has gone through and the things he's done are actually fulfilling biblical prophecy at an alarming rate. And uh, this weekend we're going to be at the Freedom Fellowship Church. Uh, Pastor Melvin Whittington here. Stand up, Pastor. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we're going to be with him this uh, week, uh, tomorrow night, Saturday night, Sunday morning. I'm going to be preaching a message tomorrow night. Reverse the curse for America. And 11 different times that when American presidents or Congress did something against Israel and voted either against them or made an executive order, how there was 11 different nat uh, natural disasters that happened to our nation each time. I will also show you what happens uh, on Saturday night. We're bringing a message called on the wings of eagles and the powerful prophetic blessing that's on America right now as we have turned back to God and to conservatism and uh, to just, you know, just God for how many veterans we got here? Just check this out. Look at this. Give the Lord some credit. Amazing. Folks, I can see tonight also uh, Stephen Benanun is here from Israeli News Live. And he's actually, uh, are you live? We're live too. You're live right now? What? Our, he's actually broadcasting live right now all over the internet, all over the world. We're glad he's with us. Give the Lord some praise for him, all right? Tonight you're in for a great treat. Roger Stone, I actually had the privilege to sit way in the back and listen to him give a speech during the Minson Convention. It was in Hollywood, Florida last year, and it's one of the most fascinating speeches I've ever heard anybody give. He's a great speaker, a great American, and so tonight when he comes, you're truly going to be blessed, no doubt about that. So, uh, again, tomorrow night over at Freedom Fellowship Church, I'll be speaking on Reverse the Curse. And Saturday night on the wings of eagles. And Sunday morning, America, take your stand. Yeah. And I tell you, if there was ever a time we've got to take a stand, it's today. We've got to. No one's going to do it for us. Actually, we'll say this to, do we have any Christians here? I'm just going to ask that question. All right, look at this. Check this out. Praise God. What, we, what the American church did 
uh, early in the early 70s was basically nothing. We did nothing. And what happened was we just thought that everything would take care of itself in this great land of opportunity. Because the greatest generation had already spilled their blood to drive back Adolf Hitler and his uh, uh, attempt to destroy Europe and the world. And while we sat on our hands and did nothing, the left-wing leaning liberals literally took over this nation. They destroyed our judicial system. They ruined our educational systems. They got, they, they rewrote history. And then they decided they would take away our religious freedoms. And at some point we finally woke up. Can you say amen? And when we woke up, when, when we actually let God take over in our lives, when we actually said, hey, we're going to start standing up for ourselves, and we began to pray and motivate and organize like you folks are doing here. I don't know if anybody in, in America, David, is doing what you guys are doing. Not this early. Uh, there's no way. This, let me just say this. I'm from Indiana. Mike Pence was our governor. We knew he was a God-fearing man. But when we saw Florida go for Trump, uh, I said, we're going to win this thing. I, I, we're going to win this thing. And then there went North Carolina and right on around Ohio and Michigan and Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. But it's a great feeling to be a part of a nation where there's freedom, where there's opportunity, where there's an economy that's exploding, where the taxes are finally going down. Can somebody say anything to that? And so truly tonight, I just want to say, let's enjoy ourselves in the greatest opportunity in history, the United States of America, and lift up the president and pray for him. God bless all of you. And you want more to come tomorrow night. And also tomorrow night, we're going to have another very special guest all the way from Richmond, Virginia. And, and just to give you a little taste of what you could have tomorrow night with Pastor Paul in Willis, Canada, uh, and Saturday night and Sunday morning. Willis, Canada, would you come up and greet the people, please? And maybe, did you bring a song with you, Brother Willis? I, he believe he, he may have one. So, okay, Roger Stone is on his way. He's almost here. We're right on time. Everything is good. But Willis, so good to see you, and thank you for being with us, my friend. Thank you so much. What a joy it is to be here back in the villages. God is so good. We bring you greetings from Richmond, Virginia, and we're just here to give the devil a black eye <laughs> and a bloody nose. But I'm so glad that we're on our way to see the King. Amen. Would not it be wonderful tonight if he would crack the eastern sky? And we would go straight up. But oh, he's coming back. Won't you worship with me?
up with the Stone Cold Truth book, book that Steve Austin wrote. But everything else, the Stone Cold Truth is yours. Facebook, Twitter, the website, which I told everybody to go on. So without saying anything anymore, the Villages of Trump Club is just honored to have Mr. Roger Stone here tonight. so many times during the campaign, and it is absolutely true. I go back to a time almost 20 years ago when he was on Oprah Winfrey's TV show, and she said to him, well, what about you, Donald? Will you ever run for public office? Would you ever run for president? He said, no, I don't think so, unless things get so bad that I have no choice. <laughs> See, Donald Trump didn't need to be president in order to be somebody. He already was somebody. He already was the best-known real estate magnate probably in the world. He was a brand. And 15 seasons of The Apprentice got him to the point where every American knew who he was. So he didn't have that intermediate step that some candidates for public office have, where first you have to get to know who they are, and then you got to get to know where they stand. You see, people already knew who he was, good Lord, he did not take any, uh, uh, there was no delays in finding out what he stood for. <laughs> you see, unlike so many of the politicians and those who become president that we know, <clears throat> there is no Karl Rove in Trump land. There is no snot-nosed <laughs> speechwriter, a feeding him talking points or polling or focus groups to tell him what to say in order to be popular. He speaks from the heart. He speaks from the gut. He, he verbalizes what most Americans think. And even when he calls some foreign countries a crap hole, which he may or may not have said, he's only saying what people think. Because if indeed Haiti is pardon me, a uh, shithole. It's because Bill and Hillary stole virtually every dollar of the phony foundation, leaving the people of Haiti destitute with disease, homelessness, and crime. So uh, again, I, I think he's a man with the courage to say what average people think. No, he, he's not a polished orator, he, he speaks the people's English. He speaks colloquially, the way you speak around your dinner table. And that's why I think he connects with the American people. Now, we all know, uh, and I'm a product of 10 individual presidential campaigns, beginning with my mentor, Richard Nixon, uh, going on to Governor Ronald Reagan, 1976, 1980, 1984, working for that great patriot, Bob Dole. 